What's up everybody, welcome to another video and I hope you're ready to flex those brain muscles. In this video I'm just going to do a quick update for how my first semester is going as a PhD student. This is my first semester, I finished my undergraduate degree in May in applied mathematics and I went straight for the PhD program in mathematics education here at Texas State University. So if you want to check out what the program looks like, I'll put a link in the description. But so far, based on my experience, I highly recommend math education to anyone who really wants to learn more math and help others learn more math and become a better student and a better teacher and do all these things, but doesn't necessarily want to get a degree in pure math or even applied math, right? Because that was kind of the situation I was in. I couldn't see myself doing research in pure mathematics or applied mathematics, but I knew I wanted to keep going. I knew I wanted to be a professor. I knew I wanted to learn more math, and so that's what led me to math education. And it turns out, based on my experience so far, that it turned out to be a good decision, basically, right? So the program is still very math heavy. It's still out of a math department, and the amount of credits I get is pretty much the amount of credits you would get if you got a master's in pure mathematics. In fact, it may even be a possibility for me to get a master's along the way in pure mathematics. I'm gonna to try to pull some strings and see if I can get that done. But even if I can't, it's all good. I still get to take analysis one, analysis two, uh, two semesters of topology, two semesters of algebra, combinatorics, graph theory, a few other electives. I still get a lot of math, so I still get my math fixed. That's the point I'm trying to make. So I highly recommend if you do a PhD in mathematics education, you do uh, one where it's out of a math department, right? Not in an education department. That is, if you want to teach, you know, college level mathematics, if you want to be able to still teach proof courses, linear algebra, differential equations, calculus, those kind of courses, because if you get a PhD out of an education department, you may not get enough credits, and it's going to be a lot more likely that they're going to put you in a position where you're teaching education courses, right? You're teaching pre-service teachers, those kind of courses, which I'm not saying it's anything bad. I'm just saying make sure you know what you're getting yourself into. You don't want to get a degree and then realize you can't teach the classes you want to teach. That would be a pretty big bummer. So enough about the program. Let's go ahead and get into my semester so far. I'm taking three courses. I'm taking analysis, topology, and a class called Introduction to Research in Math Education. So I'll just go in order and talk about each class and how each class is going. Analysis, we're learning about measure theory. It's like an introduction to measure theory and Lebesgue integration. Really interesting stuff, probably my favorite class, so don't tell any of my other instructors that, but I really enjoy this class a lot, and I'm doing pretty damn well in it, probably because I spend a lot of time on it because I enjoy it. But a lot of proofs, very proof heavy, of course, it's analysis. And, but yeah, I really enjoy it. And I always say, if I did end up doing pure math, I would have done analysis. That would have been my, you know, specialization would have been analysis if I had done pure math. But still very interesting. I like this course a lot. Measure theory, really cool stuff. The first time I've ever seen the Cantor set or the cantor lebesgue function, really cool stuff. I love stuff like that where it's like, sort of messes with your intuition a little bit. You're like, oh, that's not what I would, what I would expect. Oh, that's not what I, would, what I would expect. You know what I mean? But um, yeah, really interesting stuff. So the next class I'm taking is topology, which I'm not doing nearly as well in. I have a solid A in analysis. I have like a B in topology. I think I can end up with an A if I step it up a little, do better on the final exam. But so far it's been really tough for me. I've never taken topology before. It's my first time with it. And a lot of these concepts are, you know, things that I've never looked at before, never thought about before. And uh, I'm able to take some of my knowledge of analysis and, you know, we use some stuff I've learned in like intro to proofs classes and that sort of thing. But for the most part, a lot of this is thinking differently than I've ever thought before. Thinking in these spaces, you know, and thinking very abstractly. And I don't feel like I'm very good at it at all. I'm definitely not a natural when it comes to topology and thinking in this certain way that it takes to understand and be good at topology. But I'm trying, I'm making an honest effort, and I think I'm slowly getting better at it. I'm slowly getting better, and shout out to my buddy John from Epic Math Time for responding to my texts and talking me through a lot of the stuff. He knows a lot of topology, definitely a lot more than me. So thank you so much, John, for responding to my really stupid questions I have about uh, quotient sets and those sort of things. But moving on to my third class, this is an intro to research in math education, which is actually turning out to be really interesting. And the reason why is because before I got into this program, I knew this was what I wanted to do, or at least that's what I thought, but I had no real experience with what research in math education even really looked like, right? And that's really what this course does, is it gives you a full you know, it's a very breadth course, not much depth. You're not diving deep into any particular aspect, but very much so breadth. You're getting to see all the different areas of math education, which is really good for me, and I'm really glad I took this course 
in my first semester because I'm really getting to find out which areas I enjoy and I'm interested in versus which ones I'm not, right? So like the more theoretical uh, articles I'm less interested in reading or maybe they're just harder to read for me, a lot of jargon terminology that I've never seen or learned before, but uh, typically dealing with like kids learning fractions, those articles that are a little more elementary, I tend to be less interested in, but like how students think of and understand limits and stuff like that, I tend to be more interested in. So I think as far as the content goes, I'm definitely interested in looking at math education and sort of the upper level math, right? Calculus, proof courses and above. And I'm also very interested in how the classroom works. You know what I mean? I'm very interested in looking at things like discourse, things like group work, active learning, and comparing those to maybe other methods. And the reason I'm so interested is because I want to see if there are things that teachers could do differently that would really improve the success of the students, whether it's just their performance or their attitudes toward mathematics and those sort of things. That's what I'm really curious about, and especially at the upper level, calculus and above. So that's what that course is all about. It's a lot of reading, more reading than I've ever done, probably more writing than I've ever done too. I got a 12 page paper that I got to put together. It's like a full literature review. I don't even really know what that is, or at least I didn't until a couple weeks ago, right? But I feel like I'm getting used to it. I'm getting better at it. I'm getting quicker at reading and understanding and that sort of thing. So. We'll see. I'm going to continue. Next semester, the plan is to take analysis again, which will be the last analysis course I ever take. This is analysis one. That's analysis two at the graduate level. That's it. Then I take the qualifying exam for analysis. Hopefully I pass. And then I really put analysis behind me, which is kind of sad because it's a topic I've always really loved and enjoyed. So maybe somewhere down the line in the future, I can go back and make some videos. So maybe I'll make some more proofs is what I'm trying to say. Talk about analysis and uh, have some fun with that. But next semester, let's see. Analysis, abstract algebra, and history of math. So two math classes, one math education course. I'm liking that spread, right? Because the two math classes and the one math ed course, it kind of balances out where it's not too much reading, but it's also not too much math kind of thing. So I'm gonna stick with that. And then over the summer, hopefully I'll be able to take a couple of classes and TA again. I'm still TAing this semester for pre-calculus. Next semester, I don't know yet, probably pre-cal again, and then we'll see where it goes from there. I'm hoping to get a Cal 1 class eventually, maybe Cal 2. We'll see. I'll probably have to relearn a lot of that stuff, the sequences and series, the divergence, convergence tests, that sort of thing. Definitely have to review that in order to teach a lab for that class, but we'll see. So far, I'm enjoying the semester. I will say, to finish this video, just some general takeaways. As far as the differences between undergrad and grad school, I'll point out a few of the things that I've noticed so far. First of all, grad school, yes, the material is harder. Yes, it's a little more stressful, but on the contrast of that, it's very focused. There's absolutely no busy work. Every single thing you do has a specific purpose. And because of that, it's more meaningful, in my opinion, right? What I'm doing, I feel good about. It's exactly what I wanna do is what I wanna learn. And I feel like it's building up my knowledge that I'm gonna use for my future right? So it's definitely more meaningful. You have more of a sense of purpose. It's more focused. But at the same time, yes, it is more stressful. The material is harder. Uh, so my biggest piece of advice, some things that I've learned this semester that I guess I wish someone would have told me this, that kind of, you know, thing, what I wish someone would have told me before grad school is that you got to still have some things that have nothing to do with math. So I have a few hobbies, a few things that you do to sort of keep you sane and keep you healthy. Otherwise, you will go absolutely crazy, which started to happen to me about a month into the semester, started to go a bit crazy. So you got to reel things back a little, take a couple, you know, take a day off, uh, bring some of those hobbies, those things that you used to do back. Don't just dive completely in and do nothing but math. You will go crazy. Okay, so that's probably the biggest lessons I've learned this semester. Uh, other than that, I'm just still doing what I did in undergrad, still asking a ton of questions, still going to office hours, working with my classmates, trying to be disciplined, trying to plan time to study, spend a lot of time, put a lot of focus on this. And yeah, other than that, it's pretty consistent with undergrad. So hope you all enjoyed this video. Hope it wasn't just a big, long ramble. Hope you got something out of it, whether you're a current grad student, you already finished, or you're looking into grad school. Hopefully you got something out of this video. So hit the like button if you did, but most importantly, Keep flexing those brain muscles. See y'all later.